Hey everyone, welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast, where we talk about everything dog. Q and A's with veterinarian professionals, rescue operators, everyday topics. We cover everything dog on this podcast. So make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform, and make sure you're following us on social media on both Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for listening. Now here's that next episode. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Canine Culture Podcast. We have a very special guest with us today. Her name is Debbie and she is the founder of Canines United. So welcome to the show, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Debbie Johnson and I started a nonprofit called Canines United. Um, and I started it, we were official in 2015, I believe it was, um, April of 2015 and, um, how I started it was a canine in my County at the time where I lived in St. John's County was murdered in the line of duty. And I saw his death on the news and it just captured my heart. Um, I've been an animal lover my whole life. Uh, don't have any ties or any family in law enforcement, um, but just saw the dog's death. And the, the immediate thing I think was, how does something like this happen while I'm home safe and sound? Um, mm-hmm. That's the thing that really resonated with me the most. So next thing I know, I am going to the funeral <laughs> <laughs> and um, which was, absolutely one of the most emotional things I've ever attended. Um, and then when I left the funeral, I went to the sheriff's office and made a donation and then just inquired. I said, you know, as a civilian, what can I do to support these amazing units? And, um, I winded up, um, having a meeting with the sergeant of the canine unit and, um, and then I winded up going through their, Civilian Law Enforcement Academy, which I think every citizen should go through just to learn all the different aspects of law enforcement and what they do. And it was during that Civilian Law Enforcement Academy, um, I went on a ride along um, with a canine handler. And um, that's where I learned that, you know, the canine unit's one of the most expensive units to run in law enforcement and sometimes the most underfunded depending upon the agency. Mm -hmm. So I've been in the business world for 22 years and um, had put on charity events in the past for my church and whatnot. And I went back to the sheriff's office. And by this, by this time, you know, they're like, who in the world is this little girl? And she will not go away, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, they kind of thought I was crazy at first, but I said, you know, I've put on charity golf tournaments before in the past for my church. Could I go through you guys, um, put on a charity golf tournament with the caveat that all the proceeds would go to the canine unit. And they explained, well, if you go through us and it'd have to go to the four-star fund, which is a general fund. And I said, I don't want to do that. I said, I said, what about if I started my own 501c3, would you allow your unit to reach out to my org, tell me what the need is. And then I go directly to the vendor or the company, make the purchase and donate it to your unit. And they said, yeah, so that's what I did. That's amazing. I love that you jumped into action. And I feel like if I had ever gone to a funeral for a fallen canine, um, I probably would have done the same thing. Uh, Yeah. You know, I... So not the same story and I'm not quite where you're at yet, but you, I look up to you and, um, you know, I learned about your organization, I would say a year and a half, two years ago, and somehow it was either in the news or I found out about it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And since then I've actually had on the podcast, a canine handler talking about how underfunded they are, how expensive it is. And you know, the love they have for their dogs and the good work they do for their dogs. So that's amazing that you're supporting that. And I can kind of resonate with why you started Canines United. So 
I rescued a senior Pomeranian um, at the end of 2019. And I had never rescued a senior before, but I'd had a senior a few years prior that passed away. And I started to get a little more involved in the, the dog rescue community. And I guess it never dawned on me how many senior dogs are just dumped or taken to the vet to be euthanized just because their owners are tired of them. They don't want to take care of them. The dog doesn't play anymore. And so a lot of my drive for starting this podcast um, is A, to provide free information and get just get the word out there of people doing good work for dog rescues, but then also giving animal owners, dog owners, a resource if they need help trying to find something for a condition or an issue they're having. Uh, and then a, a part of that is that I am hoping in about nine to 10 years, uh, maybe shorter, <laughs> I want to start a small dog hospice care. Um Aww. So that's the plan. Uh, so like I said, I look up to you and your mission and what you've done because, I mean, Canines United is huge. I mean, everyone's heard of them. You guys do phenomenal work. And so to that point, so for anyone that hasn't heard of Canines United, can you summarize kind of what you guys do? And you guys do a lot, but can you summarize kind of what you guys do? Oh my goodness. It, it's It's been a whirlwind, you know? Um, <laughs> right. I never thought that we, my main thing when I started Canines United was I didn't want to put ourselves in a box as far as like that we would only do, we would only donate one thing, you know what right. I mean? Like one type of equipment, like let's just say bulletproof vest. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, we want to fund whatever the need is. That's how we're truly going to help and make a difference. Right. So what we do is agencies will send in a request of whatever the need is. So we have actually donated anywhere from an actual dog to a harness, tracking harness and everything in between. You know, um, we've actually donated a vehicle for before um, heat alarms, inserts, which is the big, um, you know, metal cage that goes in the back of the canine vehicle that helps keep the canine safe. Um you know, bite suits, um, training equipment, there's all types of things that we've donated. So that's the main part of our mission. And then the second part of our mission is we do an 18 by 24 canvas portrait of every fallen canine in the U.S. Um, That was super special to me that I wanted to do something for the handler to honor their partner. Uh, when they passed away or if they died or they were killed in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. We have an amazing artist in Tampa. His name is Damon that does all of our portraits for us. And they're, they're 18 by 24 canvas that are actually mailed to the handler. Um, And then along the journey, we, you know, I was listening to handlers all across the U S that were reaching out to us. And another big thing was training. So um, sometimes within the agency, it wasn't within the budget to send their teams to any kind of advanced training. So I've been blessed uh, along my journey and have been able to um, come across some of the top canine instructors in the industry. And so I decided to put together a team of instructors. Um, and we go, we now go across the U S and we put on free training seminars. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So we do it in Florida, obviously. Um, and then we do it all throughout the U S but we do just all different types of whether it's problem solving, um, tactical, um, tracking, I mean, all the different. So we basically, do the seminars, we find out from the, the attendees, you know, what is it that you want to work on? What is it that you feel that you, um, you want to learn? Um, and we, we kind of like cater those seminars to, uh, or what we do. And then when we were a part of proposing SB 388 for, um, to the EMS transport, then, we also do first aid training seminars. So that was super important to me to be able to do those as well. So 
uh, back to what you just said about the, the bill that you guys had signed, you guys had, you were successful in getting a bill signed that would allow, uh, canines to be transported by ambulance if they were injured in the line of duty, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And are, are you guys working on that in any other States right now? Uh, yes. So actually, <laughs> so, um, I'm not a big political person, but, um, when, um, when canine, it kind of started, my political journey kind of started in 2018 when canine bear, I mean, canine Fang was murdered for Jacksonville Sheriff's office. So his death at the time, I knew, I always knew when I first started that it was only a third degree felony. If you killed a, a law enforcement canine, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous, mm-hmm. but starting a nonprofit from the ground up, it takes a lot of time, especially when you work full time and you have a, you know, you have a daughter and a husband. Um, so I had my head down doing all of that, but when Fang was killed, it was just that overwhelming feeling again. Um, you know, I honestly do feel like God's laid all these things on my heart. And, um, so I was like, this is crazy. So that's when I proposed SB 96, that was passed in 2019, which makes it a second degree felony now in the state of Florida, if you kill a canine. And then fast forward to 2018, no, last year, was it last year? I'm losing track of my time. Um, When ATF canine Bane um, had an electrical fire in his vehicle and and almost died, um, it was his incident that Propose, we proposed the, the EMS transport bill. So I'm actually working with a U.S. congressman right now. We already actually have the bill done um, to combine both those bills into one to make it federal. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And there's such a need for that. Uh, you know, a lot of people, I actually talked to a lot of people after the race that you guys had in May and you guys had kind of talked about that and everyone I mentioned it to, they said, wait, canines can't go in an ambulance. And then they're like, wait, it's, it's not like a first degree felony to kill a canine. Like, you know, just all of these different, which it's great that you've got it moved at least to second degree. But I mean, I I don't think a lot of the public is educated on the lack of, I guess we could say laws or the lack of support for our canines. Um, So you guys are definitely doing work that is a hundred percent necessary. Yeah. Thank you. We think so too. You know, I mean, it's the, you know, these dogs, these dogs are so, um, they absolutely love what they do, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and they, they, you know, they would do anything right. As far as to protect, um, their handler. And so, you know, to me, you know, to me, that's the whole point, right. Is they should be honored. They should be valued, um, as an officer because, um, you know, they're out there in the field day Mm -hmm. in and day out, um, helping to keep us safe. So they should be. So that's, you know, that's who we are and that's what we do. So we basically, we want to support them in any way that we can, you know, and there, and like you said, there is such a need and every agency is different. You know, your larger agencies, they have better budgets than your smaller agencies. Um, but still you're dealing with a living, breathing animal. Um, things happen that mm-hmm. you don't necessarily can account for in the budget, you know, right. um, you know, if one of them gets sick or one of them has an illness, you know, or if one of them gets injured, you know, I mean, there's all types of things that come up, you know, if, if they were to get into an accident, um, you know, and, um, wreck the vehicle, you know, Mm -hmm. well, you got to get a new vehicle, you know, I mean, it's just, there's so many things. So I think a lot of people, sometimes they feel like, um, the public feels like that the agencies, um, that the canine should be well taken care of. It's not that they're not well taken care of, but money only goes so far. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to, uh, working on that federal legislation piece, 
Is there anything else that Canines United is working on right now? And I know the answer is yes. And it's, there's probably <laughs> so many things. Um, and I know that you guys have that virtual race coming up, but what are some, what are some things you guys are working on and what are some upcoming events that you guys are hosting? Oh my goodness. We always have something going on. So, um, we are, so we have the virtual run that's coming and that's super important and special to us because that's, we host it. It's all virtual on September the 1st. So people can participate from anywhere across the U S. Um, and cause September 1st is national law enforcement canine day. Um, oh, okay. so that's the reason for it. And we want to honor the, all the fallen canines from the prior year. Um, so that's, we have that going on right now. And then we also host a race, a physical race, like we, what we do in St. Augustine in Orlando, it's coming up in November on November 19th. And then we also are going to host our very first canine competition, um, which is going to be really cool. And that's going to be in Jacksonville um, at Bishop Kenny on November the 12th. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be a super fun event um, open to the public um, where teams, you know, we'll probably have about 15 to 20 teams all throughout the state of Florida, maybe. Um, other states that's going to come and compete so they will actually do different obstacles um, of what they would face out in the field Um, Mm -hmm. you know um, and they will be competing for um, trophy and then there will be a big demonstration and of course um, some family-friendly fun activities as well Um, but just another another event to raise awareness of how awesome these teams are and what they do in the community day in and day out. Um, And then we'll also have a Christmas event. So we will have a Christmas event um, that's coming up at Boeing Oaks on December the 4th. Um, A very merry canine Christmas. Uh, So we started that. Yeah, we started that last year. um, And so that that's coming up in December as well. So, okay, so you guys ways. have a lot of events coming up. Um, some <laughs> that I didn't even know. So you're just like a little bit busy, just, just slightly, <laughs> <laughs> right? Just a little, just, um, there's always something going on. Um, you know, it just, it takes a village. It, um, I have a, a phenomenal, phenomenal team, uh, phenomenal board, a uh, phenomenal group of volunteers. Um, you know, that just helps us keep it all going. We're all volunteer. So we don't have paid staff. Um, so we're just a big passionate group of people, right. That, um, Mm -hmm. love our law enforcement canines. So, yeah. And I can speak to your volunteers because, uh, your volunteers made that race back in May run perfectly. I have never seen a more seamless race. It was easy to get your packet. You knew where to go. You knew what you were doing everyone had a good time. Like it was so perfectly organized. Oh, thank Um, you. So you guys put on great events. So anyone that's listening, if you haven't yet been to a Canines United event, I would absolutely recommend it. Even if you don't, if it's a running event and you don't run, just check it out. I mean, you guys had great vendors. There was demonstrations. It was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we tell people all the time, if you're not a runner or a walker, just come out to the demo. Um, Just about every event that we do, um, you'll be able to meet some of the canines and um, do a little bit of a demonstration because we think it's important to always educate the public, you know, on what they do. Um, And at the race, you know, at the demo, you know, you can ask questions, you know, um, you know, you can talk to the handlers, um, you know, you've got trainers that are there. So um, it's just a great way to be able to um, come and say hi and um, meet some of these great guys and gals that um, that are in the communities every day. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, where can people go to help and give back to Canines United? Uh, you can go to our website, caninesunited.org. Um, or you can follow us on social media. Um, we always have our events on our social media page. Um, 
not all of our events yet are updated on our website. Um, so if they're not on the website, you can always find them on our, on our um, social media page, on Facebook, uh, whatnot. But um, there are so many different ways that people can help. Uh, we actually have our own license plate. We got approved for our, uh, a pre-sale for our own license plate. Um, that was from our legislative efforts. Um, so people can buy a license plate to support us. Um, mm -hmm. They're $34 on our website. Uh, that's a great way for you to show your support for law enforcement canine units. Um, $25 of that $34 comes back to Canines United um, so we can you know, continue our mission. And um, you can go to our website and check out our store. We've got merchandise, our t-shirts and uh, whatnot. Um, they're always a conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even when I wear mine from the race, people are like, oh, did, did you know that dog? I'm like, well, no, I didn't know him personally, but we ran in honor of him. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And our regular shirts, our regular retail shirts, our Canines United shirts, um, people always um, are commenting that they always get stopped um, whenever they wear their shirt to say, who is that? What do they do? But, um, mm -hmm. or you can go to our website and, you know, make a donation if you want to make a donation. Um, and then we also have what's called a canine core program, which is a monthly donor program. Um, so anybody can get involved. We have levels that start out at $9 a month that goes up to $99 a month. Okay. Yeah. That's great. I always have to keep it in the nines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> all right, Debbie. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to record this with me. Um, and for all the listeners, if you guys have any questions, make sure you guys follow Canines United on social media. And um, again, thank you so much, Debbie. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you for having me. Of course. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Canine Culture Podcast. Please make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform and make sure you're following us on social media. If you have any recommendations, any topics that you'd like to hear, if you know of any guests that would be good for the show, or if you yourself want to be a guest, please reach out to us. Send us an email at canineculturepodcast at gmail.com or send us a direct message on social media. Thank you for listening and please share this with any of your dog loving friends.